Hey guys, welcome to PatternLab.London. Okay, so we've had quite a few requests when it comes to um, really in-depth tutorials when it comes to fashion illustration. Obviously, fashion illustration is all very subjective and everyone has their own unique style. This is, let's say, my style and what I've learnt to produce over the years. And so I'm going to show you a little bit of how I actually do it so that you can obviously create your own professional sort of like fashion illustrations as well. So part one of this tutorial, we're going to be looking at drafting, or sorry, creating um, fashion illustrations of faces, which we can then basically take this, drag it and place it on a fashion template or a body and then we can start to add clothes to it to build up that illustration. This is quite a detailed um, way of drawing fashion illustrations but as I said once again these are templates so once you have a range of different faces you can then apply them to your uh, bodies and the let's say put clothes on to create a whole range of different looks. So for example these two girls on the left here these faces are identical but we've simply just changed the hair, the makeup, the skin tone etc to create two very different looking um, fashion illustrations. Uh, so the way that we do this, as you can see these images down here, I'm not very good at freehand drawing, so I trace everything. It's a lot quicker, it's a lot easier. So I've just simply gone onto Google and I've typed into my search engine female portrait black and white, and that generally brings up a nice collection of high definition um, portrait shots. Portrait because we're looking for something that's very symmetrical. So once again, high resolution, so that when we zoom in, we can see pretty much all of the details of this face, which gives us something nice to trace from. I'm not sure who this girl is. I've just simply copied her from the internet. If you have, let's say, a client or a friend, you can ask them to pose for a photo for you. Make sure that face is very, very straight uh, and very, very symmetrical. So the reason why we're looking for a symmetrical face is because what we do is we take the center line. I'll just show you. We draw a line down the centre of the face, just like that. We then trace off one side. So let's say we then trace off this side of the face. We then flip it over, which then gives us a nice sort of like symmetrical, let's say, shape. We're not doing this because we want symmetrical faces. Um, far from it. We're doing it because it saves us time. If you imagine you have, let's say, 20 different fashion illustrations and you want a different face for each one, you only want to draw half the face and then flip it over because it will take you half the time than drawing the entire face. Also, this face probably would be difficult to have this hair and you might want to add a different hairstyle. So tracing one half of the face that is completely clear makes it far easier to then flip it and then add different hair etc. Anyway let's just crack on let's continue. So obviously these two have been created uh, when you do these illustrations they're not going to be identical to what you're drawing they're going to be a representation of and it all depends on how much time and energy you take when it comes to tracing off your faces. So once again um, we're going to use this face for now we've just basically found it on uh, Google as you can see, female portrait, black and white, I've just found this face. I've just simply copied it and pasted it into Adobe Illustrator, and that's the package that we're working in. Um, hopefully you're familiar with Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to do some of the basic tools or show you how to do this step by step, but ideally you should have some knowledge of Adobe Illustrator. So first of all, what I'm going to do is, um, let's just, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to get my big selection tool, which is this dark one here. You have the direct selection tool, which is the small one, and you have the black one, which is the direct selection tool. You also have your pen tool, which is over here. You have your add anchor point, your minus anchor point, and you also have your curvature tool. So these are the ones we're mainly going to be working with. Also the scissor tool and rotate, and also the pathfinder over here. And the pathfinder you can find in Windows, and then pathfinder. Okay. These ones are pretty basic tools. So they should already be on your, um, let's say, your left menu bar over here. If not, you can always go to the edit toolbar section and you can then see selection tool, direct selection tool. You can just simply click and drag them to your palette on the left. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, I'm going to get my big selection tool, which is the black one. I'm going to simply click this image here. I'm going to go object and then lock selection. You also want to make sure that your image is actually a nice size so we can scale it up. So just if it's a small image, you've copied and pasted it in, get your big selection tool, click and then click on this corner, you see you get a little tab, just click and drag. Now, you see how I'm constraining that proportion, or it's not proportionate, so if I hold down the shift key, it will lock it to the proportion of that image. We don't want a warped face, so it's just click and drag, hold down the shift key to get a proportionate shape and face. So once again, big section tool, click on this, I'm going to go to object, and I'm going to lock this down. This just simply means I can't select it, I can't manipulate it, it's now a template. Next, I'm going to get my line tool, which is this one here. It should be on your left column. I'm going to click, and I'm then going to go to my line or my stroke color, double click, 
and let's go to white. I'm going to use white because it's going to stand out and pink or blue might be a little bit distracting. So I'm going to try and find the center of this, uh, this person's face. I'm going to click and drag and as you can see we're dragging a line down the face. If I hold down the shift key it will lock it to the vertical axis. So I'm just going to draw a line down the center of this lady's face. Let's go to my stroke and let's just make it two. We can make it as thick as we want but let's go for about two. Great. And we can also go object and then lock that as well. So we can't edit any of this, which is brilliant. Okay, so next we're actually going to start to trace off this lady's face. So I'm going to go to my pen tool, which is just up here. And we already have this white selected. And we already have uh, this, let's make this 0.1. And let's also drag this out so we've got a bit of space to work from. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to show you a few sort of like tools, navigation tools here. So if you hold down the space key, you see you'll get a hand, and if you get the hand you click and drag, it means you can move around the page very, very easily and quickly, rather than using the, like, the scroll bars at the side here, which is really ungainly, ungainly which is really uh, not very simple or easy to use. Also, you have Command Plus on your keyboard zooms in, and Command Minus zooms out, which is really handy. So using these two tools together allows you to move around and zoom in and out, which is really helpful when it comes to illustration. So, once again, let's get our pen tool up in this top left-hand corner here. I'm just going to simply click at the top, and I'm just going to click and drag. And when I click and drag, I get this little Bezier tool, and that allows me to create curved lines. Now, the closer in you get, the shallower the curve. The further out you get, the steeper or more obtuse the curve. Obviously, if you rotate it around that point, you'll get rotations as well. So you want to try and map or trace the illustration. And this is probably the hardest part when it comes to um, tracing or illustration. Adobe Illustrator is this curve tool. I'm just simply clicking and dragging. Now her hair is slightly covering her face. I'm just going to try and forget about that and imagine where her face would be. Click and drag. Click and drag. And then here we can click and drag as well. Now if I hold down the shift key, you see how it locks it to the horizontal? So when I click and drag, hold down the shift key, it will lock it to that horizontal, which will give me a nice smooth curve. And if I go to my small selection tool, you always click the small selection tool or one of these tools to stop that line or to end the line. As you can see here, I've got like a little bit of a weird sort of like angle going on. So you can always go back in and adapt this. So go to your small selection tool, click and you can drag it out. You can move it in. You can move this point down. You can also play around with these handles, which is the curves, to basically reshape. Hold down the shift key to lock it to the horizontal to reshape the face. Okay, so that's looking good, not too bad. So now we have the outline of our face completed. That's brilliant. I can maybe move this point down as well. So a small selection tool, you can click. You see how that's finding that point? Click on that point, and with the nudge keys on your keyboard, or the arrow keys, you can move it up and down, or left and right, for example. So that will help you uh, perfect your outline, or your illustration, or your tracing. So now we have the face, we're going to move on to the, um, let's say, eye and nose and eyebrows. So I big fan of drawing eyebrows and there's quite a lot going on here there's this new kind of what is it trend where you have this quite um, brushed or dramatic eyebrow we're going to add that to our illustration to create a bit more detail and make it a bit more kind of like interesting looking so I'm going to get my pen tool I'm just going to click at this point and I'm going to trace it I'm not going to do too much I'm just going to click you see how I'm just clicking to kind of create this like brush almost like lots of individual hairs and then click and drag to create that nice curve take it over we could maybe even do that. Nah, that's going to be weird. Let's hit Command Z on my keyboard to go back. Click on that point, And then we can click and drag. Click and drag. Here as well. Click and drag. Click and drag. And then take it back to that point. And as you can see, if you see how the little circle appears next to my pointer? That is because we are then closing that object. Okay, so I'm going to click there as well. Now this is a bit of a sketchy eyebrow. So I'm going to get my... Uh, what is it, the anchor point tool, and that just allows me to change these curves ever so slightly. So let's zoom in. Let's have a real look at this. So I'm just going to simply click and drag. It's not too bad. This could probably do with coming up a little bit. You're kind of like using your artistic eye to sort of like imagine where these trace lines would look best. So you can shape and curve her eyebrows as much as you like. Maybe this point needs to be more sharper. Also here we've got a slight dip. Let's go to the Add Anchor Point tool, and we can just add a point to that line where there wasn't one before. And with my nudge keys, or my arrow keys my keyboard, I can just nudge that down. So that's looking a little bit more like we've traced it. These are a little bit dramatic, so I might want to get my small section tool, click on that point, and just drag it down ever so slightly. Drag that one down. 
maybe move this one down. This is also a very, very straight line. Perhaps we add a point here, and we can just nudge it out with our um, our arrow keys. We can also take this one here. So it's all about taking your time and just getting a really beautiful look and style. We can also go to the Convert Anchor Point tool, which is this one over here. And we can then just start to add a little bit of shaping. These are great as straight lines, but maybe we want them to be a little bit more curved. Click and drag. Let's get my small section tool. We can move this point down ever so slightly. Maybe we want to add another little piece here. We can add some anchor points. Get my small section tool and just click and drag that out, perhaps. So you can play around with it. It's completely up to you. I'm doing this reasonably quickly. But it just adds a little bit of sort of like something. It just adds a little bit of detail to your illustration. So I'm reasonably happy with this at the moment. I can always go back into it later and um, play around with it. Let's have a look at the eye next. So pen tool once again. And also these want to be objects, okay? See how this is one complete item? It just means then I can actually fill this if I want to. If it's an open item, like this for example, you can fill it but it's not a particularly good shape. You have no control over this curve here. So just make sure you always join up these items because we're going to be adding colors them later on so you want them to be joined same with this here let's click let's create her the arm and shape of her eye and once again if you've got a line i see how that that's curving if you click back on that point you'll lose the other curve and it'll become a point so just click and drag click and drag it's all about the same kind of concept you're just basically clicking dragging to create these shapes let's go to the next piece Let's go to this sort of like, I'm not quite sure what you call it, it's a little bit of part of the eye where sleep sort of like collects. And let's just create this line here. So this is going to be almost like her eyeliner or her eyelash line. I'm not going to be, we could actually add some eyelashes here if we want to. Click. You know, it's up to you how much you want, how much detail you want to go into. There we go. Let's take this into here. We can also go down. This might look really awful when it comes to the illustration. But you know what? Let's do it anyway because we can always remove it later. Okay, and what I do is I'm not going to do those eyelashes just now. Let's just take that back in. But also what I want to do is I want this to be a complete object. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to follow that eye. Okay, so this is almost like a makeup layer. Click. Click and drag. Then we're going to go to this point, and then click to here, and then join that. And we can also go back in. See how this is slightly too large? We can just take that back in again. And we can also move this point out and move it back to where it needs to be. Let's zoom in. See how that's slightly overlapping? You can always take it down to about here, perhaps. Okay, so let's say that's our eyelash layer. We can also get our small section tool. You can find click on that point, hold down the shift key. Shift key basically allows you to queue up your selection. So I've clicked on this point, if I hold down the shift key, click on that point. I can then move that whole section up if I want to. I can even move it around, change the shape of it. So that's slightly nicer when it comes to our nicer shape around the eye. Let's get our pen tool. Now I'm going to create the creases. And the more detail you add, the nicer your illustration will be. Because don't forget these are templates, you can save them and keep them forever. So the more detail and effort you put into them now, the nicer they will be forever or for the future. Okay, what next? Let's um there's a little bit of a, a little crease down here. I possibly don't want to add these because it might make her a little bit look a little bit tired on the illustration. Uh what I found in the past. But let's just add them anyway because we can play around with them later. Okay, let's zoom out. I'm really not a fan of these lashes. They just look so ungainly and so nasty. So I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to create something that's a bit more simpler. Or far simpler. Let's do like a nice little tick. Not tick, like a little cat's eye perhaps. There we go. So once again, it's all about clicking and dragging. Lovely. Let's follow that line up to the top here. And then down. Let's take it round. And let's take it back to there. 
once again the more you experiment with this tool the better you will get at doing it it can be a little bit dramatic to begin with yeah I prefer that a little bit more I'm not a massive fan of this sort of like this curve down here so let's take that ever so slightly lower let's move that line up so we've got a little bit under the eyelid here okay great yeah I'm a little bit happy with that okay so let's work on the nose the nose can always be a little bit tricky basically less is more generally when it comes to noses is what I found so let's just do the nostril just like that and then for the outline of the nose let's just take it from about here take it to about here see if we were to go all the way up like this it would just look so weird on our illustration so I would say keep it to just just there just to define the outline of that nose ever so slightly and we can also because there's quite a deep scoop here we can also add a line to this point and you know what I'm going to stylize it I'm going to put a little point in there and what I'm doing is, the reason why I'm doing that is because it almost feels like, although we're just using line art, it almost feels like that line is thicker further up, so it almost defines the curve a little bit more. We might find on the actual finished illustration it just doesn't look right, but we can change that when we've actually finished. Okay, let's go on to the lips. So I'm going to get my pen tool. It's going to click and drag, go to this point. It's quite sharp, I'm going to add a little bit of a curve there. Let's pull this down. It's lovely. Let's take this in. Let's then go down to the bottom lip. Also, once again, holding the shift key. And also, it's good. you need to make sure you're lining up this center line because when we actually mirror this, you want these points to match up so you can create a finished object, but we'll come to that a little bit later. Uh, this probably needs to be curved. And we can just nudge that up. Okay, let's do the inside of the lip. So... Let's do this big sweeping bottom lip. And then let's do the top. And it's only ever so slightly different here. So I'm just going to do that. And these are essentially just star lines. So I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so we have pretty much finished the outline of our face. Now, if I wasn't talking through this and doing this quite quickly, that wouldn't take too long at all. Now, I'm not going to spend ages doing this side because I can't see part of the face. And why? I've already got it. I can just simply mirror it and reflect it. So, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get my big selection tool, which is the black one. I'm going to go Object and then Unlock All. And so my face, or this image, can now be removed. So as you can see here, oh, wait, look, I've forgotten the eyes. The actual eyes themselves. So let's go in. Now to create the eyes, I'm going to get my circle or ellipse tool. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to go to the very center point of her pupil. And I'm going to hold down the Shift and Option, or Shift and Alt key. Click and drag. And the reason why we do the Shift and Alt, or Option, is because it actually... So if I were to just click and drag, it would go from the point that I started. If I do Shift and Alt, it goes from the very first point that I started, if that makes sense. So let me do that again. So I'm going to go to the center point of the eye. I've got my ellipse tool selected. I'm going to hit Shift and Option on my keyboard, or Shift and Alt. Click and then drag out. That's great. Let's go to the Small Section tool, click off. Then let's go to the Circle tool again. Let's find that center point, Shift and Alt again. Click and drag. And I'm just going to define the outline of that eye. And that's looking great. I actually prefer, me personally, it's all about dilation of eyes. It, for some reason, the science of it is all about it being slightly more attractive. I don't know. But I'm going to simply get the big section tool, click on this, and then you can see that I can expand this any way I want. But once again, hold down the Shift and Option key, or Shift and Alt, and you can then expand it. There we go. And it still remains proportionate to the actual other bit. So this will now be our pupil. It's slightly larger. So next, what we're going to do is, because this eye is bigger than our eye, um, or the sclera, or the actual eye hole, um, I'm going to select this outline, or this the outline of the pupil here, or outline of the... Um, the iris. I'm going to get my scissor tool and I'm going to snip just here, just here, here and here. I'm going to get my small selection tool. I'm going to click. You see how this top part's been separated? I'm going to select the top part and hit backspace a few times on my keyboard. Get to the bottom one, backspace a few times. This one, I'm going to select it with my small selection tool and then snip, snip, go to my selection tool, click the top backspace. Okay, but now we can't really fill this. It's not an object. It's just a couple of lines. So what I want to do is get my pen tool. I'm going to find uh, this side. You see how I've got like a little line next to my um, selection tool. That means I'm adding to that line. I'm going to click. I'm going to go to the top here. Click and drag to get that curve. And then see how it's got like a little circle? That means I'm joining. So that's how the top edge joined. Let's do the bottom edge. Click. 
drag, click. Great stuff. So that's my um, iris done. And as you can see, I'm going to be really OCD here, but look, that's just slightly higher. I just want to bring that in line a bit more. Same with this one. That's ever so slightly higher. Let's get our scissor tool. Let's just snip. Small selection tool. Grab this point. I'm being really, really cautious, but you can be a little bit quicker if you want. But obviously, the more time you take, the nicer it will be. I'm then going to find this one. Let's just select that line first of all. Get my pen tool. And click. Drag, click. Okay, this line's a little bit too thick, so I'm going to go to my stroke, and I'm going to take it down to one, which is the same as all the other lines. Let's zoom out. Okay, so that is her iris and her pupil done. So slightly larger pupils there. Okay, so now we are ready to move on to the next step, which is basically mirroring and flipping. So what I'm going to do is go to Object, and then Unlock All. I can now remove the face. So I'm just going to drag that off to the right-hand side here. Now, as you can see, because we drew in white, all of my lines have disappeared, but they are actually there. So what I'm going to do is get my big section tool. I'm just going to click and drag where it used to be, so it's there. Then I'm going to go to my stroke color over here. Double click, and let's make it let's make it like a dark gray. And there is my illustration of this girl. And it does look slightly different to the actual girl. It looks very plain and very boring, and it's not particularly amazing. But that's OK. We're going to start to add color and freckles and bits and pieces to turn it into something that's a little bit more interesting. But first of all, I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to click on this center point line. We don't need it anymore. So I'm just going to hit backspace my keyboard. And then I'm going to get my big section tool and click and drag over all of this. I'm going to go Object. Oh, sorry, no. I'm going to right click and go transform, reflect, and then vertical, copy, because we want a copy of it. And as you can see, there is my other side. Uh, so what I'll do is, while this is selected, I'm going to simply hold down the shift key, click and drag. Oops. Sorry, I'm going to click and drag it. I'm going to hold down the shift key. Now what this does is it just means that it locks to that horizontal axis, so we don't, you know, we don't have a slightly off face. And I'm just simply going to slide it out until it meets at that center point there. Okay? Lovely. Okay, so next, this one hasn't really turned out very well. <laughs> oh well, it doesn't matter. It's all about the concept. So next what I'm going to do is, uh, at the moment we have two completely separate faces, and I want to kind of join them up. You see the lips isn't really one item, the face isn't either. So what I'm going to do is get my small selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over these two points here. I'm going to right click and go join the bottom two. So small selection tool, click and drag, right click, join, and then for the lips, click and drag, right click, join, click and drag, right click, join. And that should be it. There's no other elements that I need to sort of like join up here. The reason why we've joined it, so it's one item, is so that we can now fill it with a color. Probably not blue, but you can now fill these objects with colors. So we're now going to start defining this face and adding colors, in other words. Uh, so for example, the eyebrows. I'm going to get my big selection tool. I'm just going to click and drag over these two eyebrows. And I'm going to take this time now, because at the moment they're not joined or they're not grouped. Now, if I want to add color to these together at the same time, I don't want to select that, change it, and then select that and change the color. I want to do it at the same time. So let's just get our big selection tool, click and drag over these two objects, and then go Object and then Group. So now when I click on it, they're both selected, which is great. So I can change the color just by simply clicking on one of them. And I'm going to change the color. So once we have these selected, I'm just going to take it from the line fill to become the fill. And you do this by using this little um, flip here. There you go, swap, fill, and stroke. And there we have our eyebrows. With the pupils, once again, get my big selection tool, click, hold down the shift key to queue up your selection, click on the other pupil, and then go object, group. You can also see that's command or control G, so that's the shortcut. All the shortcuts are listed down the side if it has one. So I'm just going to hit group. And next I'm going to swatch, uh, sorry, swatch, swap the fill and stroke. Uh, once again I'm going to get my eyeliner here, so I'm going to click, hold down the shift key to queue up that selection, click on that one, hit command G to group on my keyboard, and I'm just going to swap those fills open. So we're now starting to define um, this person. Same with the nostrils, click, hold down shift key, click. Then we're going to hit control G to group, and then just swap the fill. So now, as you can see, because we grouped them, we can edit them together. Let's do the same for the iris. So click, hold down the shift key, click. Let's go control G to group. And then I'm not going to fill this yet. I'm going to keep it just plain as it is. Now, do you remember I said that this can sometimes make the girl look tired? These little lines under here. So probably I'm just going to remove Let's remove them and see what it looks like. I mean, it's slightly better. It depends what you're looking for. I actually quite like them. 
I quite like the fact that they're there. It adds a bit more sort of like, I don't know, wisdom to the eyes. Okay, so the lips, once again, this is great. It's already a complete item. So now we can either choose to fill this or not. Anyway, what we're going to do next is, so now we have our fashion illustration, which is the line art version. We now want to start filling this with color. And then obviously later we can start adding makeup and hair, and I'll show you how to do that. But right now it's all about just completing this illustration. Oh, there's one other thing to talk about as well, which is line um, width. So as you can see here, this is quite an interesting shape because we have lots of different textures or line widths going on here. The outline of the face is quite a thick outline. The little inner lines are quite a lot thinner. Also we've got this really interesting sort of like little dashed line around the iris which makes it, it breaks it up, it's not such a permanent line. So I'm going to now start to add sort of like design details or styling to this face because at the moment all the lines are the same. So I'm going to get my big selection tool, I'm going to click on the outline of this face, I'm going to go to my stroke which is over here, and I'm just going to make it two maybe two, maybe three perhaps. Same for this one. Um, so here for example we can make this line and this line, we can make these both 1.5 if we so desire. You see how it's starting to build sort of like a little bit more texture. We can also let's say take this, so get our small selection tool, click on this element, get the scissor tool and we can just snip it maybe here and maybe there and then I can make these two top elements slightly thicker. And I can even, over here, if I put like a, a round join, it creates more of a smoother edge, whereas before it was sharp, we can create a more smoother edge. Now I know this is real detail, but it all goes into creating a really interesting concept when it comes to your face. Maybe that's too heavy, maybe it's not, it's up to you, maybe this should be 1.5 instead, and maybe this should be more like 0.5. You see, so we're just building up these concepts. Also this is quite, let's just broaden that nose ever so slightly. Also, this nose is very, very rounded. I'm not a massive fan of it, so I might just get my small section tool, click on this point, and move it down, maybe change the curvature ever so slightly. You could bring it in, make the nose a bit narrower. It's completely up to you how you change this. I'm going to leave it for now because I don't want to spend too much time on that. Um, okay, same with the lips. We could add some style detailing here. So we get our big section tool, we can click on it, we can copy, so control C on your keyboard and control V to paste it in. We can place it over the top here. We can get the scissor tool and we can maybe just snip, 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 I just snip around, see what happens and then basically we can remove those pieces and this doesn't look like much at the moment but actually let me um, let me make these slightly darker. Right, let me start that again, sorry. Let's just go back. Control Z on your keyboard to go back. So this is the element that I've pasted in. Let's just make that two for now. So it's slightly dark or slightly thicker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply snip, snip. I can remove that. You know, I can maybe take out this piece here. I can maybe uh, take out a few bits here. You see, I can even make this top edge dash. So if I go to my dashed line. And I can then change this to be maybe 30, and then have this as 10, have that as 2. And it creates a different kind of concept. It's all about building up the style of your illustration. Now, I'm not saying that's good. I'm just saying that these are the things that you can do to give it a little bit more sort of like interest, if that makes sense. Okay. Right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to um, start adding... So, uh, right, let's just move this over here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, before we start adding hair and makeup and colors, uh, I'm going to show you the grouping. No, <laughs> sorry. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you, sorry, how to add color to the face and to the lips and to the eyes, etc. So, what we want to do is, we want to keep our line art very separate from our color layer. So, as you can see here, if I drag this off, that is a color layer that has been placed. So, the line art still exists, but we've just created a color layer. And to do that, it's really simple. We're going to get our big section tool. I'm going to click on the outline of my face, first of all. I'm going to go Control C and Control V to copy and paste. I'm going to move it back into its position. I'm going to remove the line art because we already have that line art present and I'm just going to simply get a color. So I can now either go into my color picker here just by simply double clicking and I can then decide to go for, well let's go for a pink I guess. I, it's hard to find skin tones that work. That's very pink. So let's just simply pick up this color here. So I'm going to go to my eyedropper tool. This The eyedropper tool basically if you have something selected, the eyedropper tool, whatever you click on, it will take the attributes of that. So like this for example, you see? So I'm going to go for that pink. 
that sort of like that skin tone. However, at the moment, unfortunately, Illustrator works in layers. So because we copied and pasted that in, it's now at the very, very top of everything. So I want to get that to the very back. And you can do that by going Object, Arrange, Center Back. And that now goes to the very back of our face, which is great. So once again, we have our color layer and we have our line art layer. Okay, so always keep them separate. But once again, we want to make sure that the sclera of the eye is white because it looks a bit odd at the moment. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a compound path. So we're going to get our big selection tool. I'm going to click on my arm and eye. I'm also going to hold down the shift key and click on the other one. And I'm also going to click on my color layer. So holding down that shift key, click on the color layer. So now all three items are selected. I'm then going to right click and go make compound path. And as you can see, it's cut the eyes out, which is great. But it's also come to the top once again. So let's go Object, Arrange, Center Back. Now, if you want to send this to back without doing this, you've got Shift, Command, and the open square bracket. That's a shortcut. So we can do that from now on. So that would be bringing it to the front of my keyboard. That's sending it to the back. OK, looking good. Ah, there's one thing that I did wrong here. So basically, you see how... Um, I picked these eyes here. Well, basically, I didn't leave the existing line art. I just took them. So when we go to our actual finished piece, you can see that we've lost the line art around the eyes, which is really annoying. So I'm going to go back and do it properly. So I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to click on the eyes. <coughs> Hold down the shift key, click on the eyes. I'm going to copy and paste. So I'm pasting them in. They're still selected. I'm going to hold down the shift key, click on my color layer, right click, compound path. And now we have it. I'm going to send it all the way to the back. And as you can see, we now still have that line art, which is good. So always copy and paste elements. Don't use the existing ones. OK, for the lips, let's have a look. For the lips, it's going to be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to simply click on the lips. And then I'm going to go Command-C to copy, Command-V to paste. Just going to place that back over where it used to be. And I'm going to get my eyedropper tool. I like this color. Just going to click, and then we have our color. Now, it's really interesting um, when it comes to coloring in Adobe Illustrator. So if I were to just pick, you see how this color is different? So over here, the fill is dramatically different to what we have on screen. The reason why is because over here in your transparency palette, we have got it on 42 opacity, you see? And we've also got it on multiply. So if I had it on normal, and I had it on 100, that's a very dramatic look. We can't see the lips behind it. So if I change the opacity down to about 35, it's much softer. If I go much lower, it's really soft. So it allows you to create, using that color, it allows you to sort of like change the intensity of it. Also, don't use normal, use multiply. The reason why is because it kind of takes the background color as well. So if I was to place it here, you see how these two colors are different? It's because it is using um, the it is basically overlaying it, so it's picking up the color underneath here. So it creates a more natural um, color when it comes to the skin tone. So if we just change the skin tone, that color of the lips would change as well. Anyway, let's continue. So it looks like I've got these little sleepy bits here, which is quite fun. Have I? Yeah, I have. Let's zoom in. So let's just add some color to the sleep. So I'm going to zoom right in. I'm going to select that piece. I'm going to select that piece. This is my small selection tool. So I'm just going to select that piece, select that piece, let's zoom out, and let's just simply go copy, oops, sorry, let's take those pieces again, take those pieces again, oops, wrong one, copy, paste them in, place that back over the top, and you know what, I'm going to make them the same color as my lips, so get my eyedropper tool, there we go. That might look weird, but we're going to keep it like that. In fact, that looks really odd. But I'm okay with that. I think we might just make it black. No, we're going to leave it exactly as it is. <laughs> okay, uh, so next what we're going to do is we're going to do the eyes. So the pupils are fine as they are, but our irises possibly not. So if we get our big section tool, click on the irises. I'm going to go, um, f where is it? Uh, edit, copy, edit, paste. Because once again, we want to keep the line art and we want the color layer separate. So this would be my color layer. So I'm going to remove um, the line art. And I'm going to go to the fill just by double clicking it. And let's go for a blue. That's quite a light blue. Once again, let's go to our transparency palette over here on the right. Let's go to multiply. And let's take the opacity down. So it can be really pale. Possibly that color isn't the best color. We can maybe go for a more sort of like steely blue. There we go. Take the opacity down ever so slightly, so you can play around with it. So that is our face, which is looking great. 
it's not my best face, but it is uh, it's good enough. So now we've added color to our um, illustration. It's looking great, but obviously at the moment we haven't got any hair with it. It's just very basic. So let's start to do that now. Now we're going to start to add sort of like uh, freckles and um, makeup and sort of like beauty spots, and then obviously creating, or sorry, adding hair, oh, adding hair as well. So all these different hair. Uh, we can apply to this this face but first of all before we do that at the moment these are all separate elements which is great but what happens if we want to transport this to another part of our page so what we need to do is basically group it together so once you've finished it you want to group it let's go to the big selection tool let's click and drag over all of it and let's go object and then group and now it is one whole piece which is great you can you know move it around put it wherever you want to put it fabulous Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, once again, now we've finished our faces, we're next going to move on to adding a bit of makeup and hair to these uh, faces to obviously create a whole range of different um, looks and styles, I guess. And we're going to be using them in very much like a template way so we can create one hair piece but use it on a range of different faces. So I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon.